First off, Wayne, I want to thank you for giving people like myself a place to share their experiences judgment-free. Although it's nothing like the old days, but you still get the odd looks like you like you're a looney tune from certain people when talking about cryptids like Bigfoot and other paranormal stuff. My encounter happened just a few years back in 2019. It was in June of that year, and I know that because I had just lost a great friend, possibly my very best friend, certainly one of the best men I had ever known. He was killed in an auto accident. This wasn't one of those killed-on-impact type deals. Granted, there is no good way to lose a friend, but to go pain-free is definitely ideal. This wasn't the case for him. He hung on for a few days. He had always been a fighter, and that held true to the very end. I remember we laid him to rest on a Wednesday. I was not taking this well. To say that is a huge understatement. My girlfriend at the time, now wife, made the suggestion that I head to the mountains for a couple days and take time to grieve. Grieve and think. I thought this was a great idea, so I began making plans. In my 40 years, I have always loved camping. But there was one thing I'd never done. Solo camp. We'll call my late buddy D. Camping alone is something D and I had always said we wanted to do before we die. A bucket list item, I guess you could, I guess you could say. Well, needless to say, he never got to check that one off. And that really sucks. As a tribute to him, It was going to get checked off mine. Even though I knew I wouldn't be alone, D would be with me. He's been with me on every trip since. So all of this being said, this was very much a last minute trip. There is a campground that he and I really enjoyed. We We liked primitive camping, but this being my first solo, I felt it would be safer to go somewhere with other people relatively close by. I got online to try to book a spot. All the sites on the website had an FF next to them. FF for first come first serve. I guess due to the fact that it was so last minute. That's what I came to find out anyway. I get to the campground around 4.30 p.m. that Friday. It was already three quarters full, I'd say. Well, this isn't good, I thought. Just drove two hours for this shit. I drove around site to site, checking all the ones that had no people. Each spot has a small display of sorts. This is to show the dates and if the site is reserved for said date. Everyone I checked showed that date reserved until I got to 18. It was FD was saying, here you go, buddy. You aren't getting off that easy. I double checked just to make sure, and yep, the date was open, so I began to set up camp. Setting up camp is something I've always enjoyed. I take my time and set it up just the way I like. It's the breaking down of camp that sucks. Little did I know that less than an hour after setting up, I'd be breaking it back down. I had just sat down to relax, D heavy on my mind. When a car pulls right in front of my spot, a very polite older fella gets out and makes his way over to me. We say hello, and he asks if maybe there's another campground near with a similar name. I tell him I have no idea. He goes on to say that he and his wife reserved this spot almost a month ago. I showed him the sign where it said that the date was open and that I had already paid for it. 
I filled out the little ticket and put put the cash in the envelope and dropped it in. He asked if I knew of anyone that he could talk to that could help him. Me being pretty much a regular, I showed him the lady that oversees the grounds and where her camper was. I apologized for the trouble. To be completely honest, if they had gotten there before I had set up, I just would have moved on. But being that I had just spent over an hour setting up, I really didn't feel like doing that. And it wasn't 20 minutes later that this witch with a capital B of a woman came stomping over. I mean, this woman had hate in her eyes. Hate like I just mur- like I just murdered her brand new puppy. She didn't say hello. How you doing? Nothing. All she said was, did you reserve this spot online? No, ma'am. I tried, but it said FF, so I paid cash when I got here. She didn't even let me finish before saying, nope, don't work like that. I tried to explain everything, but she would have none of it. Let me tell you a little let me tell you a little bit about me. I am very respectful. My appearance though maybe says something else. I'm a hair over six foot three and around two hundred and fifty pounds, more than a few tattoos, and jet black beard that hangs about four inches below my collar. I don't know if maybe my appearance Made her think I'm an asshole? I've been told a few times that's what my looks put off. It couldn't be further from the opposite, though. Either way, the mega beast was looking to fight. I asked if I could just get my money back. She said she had no control over that. I won't get into everything that was said, or I'll be here all day. Needless to say, I was pissed. I started breaking down camp as half-assed as possible, just throwing everything in the bed of the truck. I knew there was another campground on top of the mountain that we were at the foot of. I just never stayed there before. You can't get much over about 8 to 10 miles an hour the whole way up there, so I wasn't too concerned with how I packed. I was pretty sure I wouldn't lose anything. Took me about 20 minutes and I was on the road again. Doing my best to hurry because now I was sure it was going to. Because now I was sure I was going to be setting up in the dark. Thanks princess asshole. I made it up the mountain in much better time than I had thought. I had only seen this place a couple times. It was so far out there that it didn't get much attention from the forestry people. Certainly not as much as the other place. I was shocked to see that there wasn't another vehicle in sight. Not one. I had only seen two on the way up. My stomach started to turn. And I'd be lying if I said I didn't seriously consider just leaving. As I said, though, I half-assed the hell out of loading, and there was no way I'd make it home like that. So I could either take it all off and pack it right, or I could man up and stay. I would later come to regret my decision. It was already pretty much dark, so I didn't even bother with setting up my tent. I decided I'd go with the camping hammock, at least for the first night. I did my best to get everything set up and got a fire going. I hadn't eaten in hours at that point, and I was starving. I threw a couple of pre-padded hamburger patties over the fire, and finally, I was ready to relax. It was that exact moment I sent a sense of calm came over me. I felt silly for being afraid. I mean, I 
I mean, I had my 45 on my hip, my 380 in an ankle holster, and my AR in the back seat of the truck. What was I afraid of? You may be asking. At that moment, absolutely nothing. I finished up my extremely late dinner and polished off my fourth Coors Light. I was beat. That hammock was calling my name. Black bears are a real concern on that mountain, so I made sure all food was closed up securely in the truck, and I crashed. I really don't remember a time where I was more comfortable. A light breeze, the sound of nature, all that combined, I was out. It was a little after 2 a.m. when something woke me. I had no idea why I woke up, but I was overtaken by this feeling I can only describe as dread. I laid there for what was only a few minutes when that feeling of dread turned to fear. It made no sense, though. I had nothing at all to fear. Nothing had happened. Why was I so afraid? Stop it, man. Stop. You're freaking yourself out. Just stop. The air was cool. The earlier breeze had stopped. The sounds of nature, too, had stopped. It was so quiet. I have never heard quiet like this. I can't explain it any other way. To say it was dark would not do it justice. It was black, not dark. I literally could not see my hand in front of my face. I tried to make myself go back to sleep, but I knew that wasn't going to happen. Not anytime soon, anyway. I thought about my buddy, Man D, I wish you were here. Watch over me, buddy. I remember thinking. That's when it happened. From out of nowhere, laughter. What in the fuck? I said to myself. It was the giggle of a small child. I was absolutely frozen. My instinct was to grab my flashlight and look, but I couldn't move. It got quiet again, and for, I'd say, about 30 seconds, nothing. Then it happened again. More giggles. It sounded like it was coming from directly behind me, no more than 10 feet or so. Then I heard a tiny little voice say, Hey, come here. Then giggle again. Don't you want to come play with me? More laughter. I need someone to play with me. I just laid there, frozen. It took every ounce of courage I could muster to grab the flashlight and raise the rain fly ever so slightly to have a look. That's when I saw her. A little girl that couldn't be more than six or seven years old walking away from me and entering the wood line. I have never been more scared than I was at that moment. I grabbed my forty-five. But what was I going to do? Shoot a child? There were no other cars. No other tents. And I know the nearest campground was at least seven miles away. Was she primitive camping with her family? And she woke up and wandered off? Could she be in trouble? Does she need my help? As I said earlier, there are plenty of black bears around here. Not to mention the hogs. Hogs could be more dangerous than bear. I couldn't just lay there and let this little girl get hurt or worse. I yelled out, Hey, hey, come back here. Are you alright? She didn't even break stride. Just kept walking and laughing. I (laughs) I rolled my chubby ass out of the hammock and got to my feet. By that time, though, she was out of my sight. That's when I heard the creepiest voice I had ever heard. Well, aren't you, well, aren't you going to go after her? 
If I had thought I was scared before, I was wrong. Hearing that brought on a whole new level of terror. I jerked my head around and shined my light to see this hideously, almost deformed old woman bent over due to the hump in her back and completely nude. Long, greasy white hair hanging but not covering her wrinkled and sagging breasts that hung seamless that hung that hung seemingly halfway down her stomach. When her jet black eyes met mine, her toothless mouth dropped open way farther than it should have been able to, and the most god awful scream left her lungs. That slant, that snapped me out of my stupor, and I just ran. I ran for my truck, which, thank God, was only about 15 feet or so from where the hammock was. I was terrified she was going to give chase, but she just stood there, screaming. The volume and pitch never changed. When I made it to the truck, I jumped in. As a rule, I always keep keep my keys on me at all times while camping, even when I sleep. That's a rule I will keep till the day that I die after that night. When I was in, I put the keys in the ignition and fired it right up, threw it in drive, and threw gravels getting out of there. Once I was away from there, I realized I had pissed myself and was crying. I have no idea when the tears started, but they were flowing. I made it down the mountain without incident and drove home. I know this isn't Bigfoot related, but you said you'd like some paranormal stories as well. Also know that if you choose to use this encounter, that most everyone out there will call bullshit. But this absolutely happened. I wasn't right for some time after it. I started going to therapy not long after. Not only for this, but it helped me deal with the loss of D and some other issues I'd been dealing with. I have never been back to that mountain. And I don't think there's enough money in this world to get me to. I lost a lot of good camping gear that night. I don't guess it matters because I haven't been camping since and I don't think I ever will again.